Hi guys, it's Amy Gable Stitcher here with a cross stitching update video. This is floss tube number 23 for those of you who are counting. Um, it is a video where I talk about my cross stitch, what I am working on, what I plan on working on and what I have finished. Um, it is the end of March, 2020. It's Friday. I do know that. I think it might be the 28th, 27th. We are in shutdown day, I think 15 here. It's been two full weeks since the kids have been to school um, because of COVID-19. Um, I live in Massachusetts, which was one of the early hotspots. Um, but now I think, you know, early hotspots in the United States, that is. Um, but unfortunately, this um, pandemic seems to have reached everybody um, in this country and the world. Um, and it has been a very trying time. I know for probably all of us, it has for me and for those of us in our house. Um, we're all trying to have some normalcy in our life. Um, my stitching has been all over the place, which you will see. Um, I've been thinking about making a video for the past week or so. Haven't quite had the mental ability to make a video. Um, just too distracted by everything else that's been going on and um, the life changes. But I feel that we're kind of settling into what the new normal is right now and I'm able to start to focus on things a little bit better and it's time to make a video, um, show you what I've been working on, make a plan for what I want to continue working on and hopefully provide a distraction for others like myself who are homebound and around your family and friends 24 seven, but sometimes need a little bit of an escape to be able to connect with other people who are in your digital social circle. circle. So long winded way to say, hi everybody. I told my husband I was gonna film a video. He has been working at home the last two weeks and his words were good luck. So we'll see what happens. Um, this is just going to be an update video with a little bit of some things that I have gotten through the mail for market. Um, I have done a lot of cleaning the last um, two weeks and organizing, which isn't my norm. So, um, and I have found probably an embarrassing amount of um, cross stitch related materials and charts throughout the house. Um, I apparently like to squirrel things away or I put things down. It's more likely I put things down and I forget where I put them. So um, I think I'm gonna do a video next week of the charts, the treasures I found while um, cleaning and purging my house thus far. And I think I'm going to do an, a few other videos um, to break my distraction, but hopefully to, you know, maybe um, be distraction for me, but hopefully also, you know, be entertaining for everybody else who's stuck in the house and looking for a diversion. So let's talk cross stitch. I have an almost finish. So... Um, the last video I did was an update video. It's probably been about a month since I did an update video. The last video I did was a video of kidding up Botany Bay. I've read everybody's comments. I haven't replied to them. I've just been in a bit of a funk. So I will try to reply, but thank you everybody who watched that video and, um, found it helpful or enjoyed it. So... One of the things I worked on the past month was Join Your Hands. This is a wedding sampler by Lila Studio. I started this, I think, right after it came out. I worked on it at a retreat for about three or four days, picked it up 
once or twice after that and had it almost half finished and then I hadn't touched it since really it came out. I think it came out in 2011. Yes, 2011. So I wanted to try to finish it um, in March. My husband and I got engaged in March, so I figured it'd be kind of cool if I finished it before, you know, our engagement anniversary. And I came pretty darn close. So let me show you what this is. So this is where I got. So let me bring it up close. This is done in two different um, colors of Overdyed, A Gentle Arts and a Weeks, which are honestly almost the same color. So there is a very slight difference. So all the lettering is over one. This is on a 32 count Belfast antique ivory linen. So, um, yes. I do have to say that I have stitched other Lila Studios charts. This one is not charted wonderfully. I think it's probably one of our earlier ones. Um, where you need to do all the graphing in of the name and the date is over four pages <laughs> where they all meet in the middle. So it was a little bit of a challenge. I ended up doing it on graph paper and putting it in. I think it's fine. So you will notice that I did change this. The graph, the chart um, has, you know, church name, place, location. My husband and I have been married now for almost 20 years. And one, our church um, name and location probably wasn't going to fit in the spot. And the second thing is I, I didn't feel like it needed it, not for us. So what I did was I just put our date. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that border above the date below it and probably call it done. I might, after it's done, if there's a little bit too much space there, I might put a tulip or an acorn or pull one of the other motifs there. But for all intents and purposes, this is just about done. So not quite a finish, but close to a finish. I put it away after I put the date in right around two and a half weeks ago when things started getting a little crazy here, just because I needed to change. So, so in the next, before the next video, in the next week or two, I would like to finish it, put the, um, that border in, iron it, and see if I have a frame to put it in. I think it's gonna fit in a standard size frame. I had measured it, so that would give me something to do to FFO that. Um, Lynette from Homesteading on the Homefront has been FFOing up a storm, so um, I need to get with it and, and FFO a little bit. So that was the first thing I worked on. The next thing I worked on, I was debating about showing it or not, but I think I'm going to because I was working on my small for the Frugal Yankee Retreat. Frugal Yankee Retreat was supposed to happen last weekend. Um, needless to say, it did not, um, it was canceled, um, or postponed. Um, so new date was set. Hopefully it will happen. Um, I do have to say it's, it's a little bit depressing is the word that, um, I had a lot of stitching things lined up for 2020. And um, the new normal is that to protect the health of everybody, to protect the strain on our medical services, that they may not happen. So um, Celebrations of Needlework hasn't made an official announcement. It's the end of May um, in New Hampshire. I don't know if that's going to happen. I typically go to that. Um, as I said, Frugal Yankee was delayed. 
stitch con um is the end of middle of june um no decision on that yet um they did reach out to say they are waiving the date that you need to withdraw from to get your full refund because they do understand that is this is happening you know this is not underneath anybody's control so um they don't want you to worry about losing your money which is great i know that the retreats that um priscilla and chelsea did same thing that they had to cancel some of them um it is what it is so i think i'm probably going to keep this small for myself because i really like it the one i was started for frugal yankee um but if i don't and frugal yankee ends up happening someone might get it so it could be a surprise so um i this is a black and white picture because ink conservation of the printer this is from punch needle and um primitive stitch punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine primitive stitcher punch needle you know the one i'm talking about great magazine this is from um winter issue number four so this is an early issue so it's a little pillow it is divide designed by the sunflower diaries so i pulled out a piece of um like blue it's like an ice blue it's a pretty good color there 28 ca count cash all i had in stash and this is this is one side of it so it's not gonna be very big i am using a victorian motto green i believe this is it it's called old sage leaves really pretty and i am also just using dmc is it 3865 winter white so i'm gonna finish that i have a button for the center and i have some chenille trim for the outside so i like to finish that and like i said if you go to frugal yankee when it's uh when it does happen it may be a small but i think i'm gonna keep this one for myself and and do another small because i was really enjoying it and i really just love the piece so um yeah so uh all these retreats being being moved um what can you do um but like i said i think that you know the organizers have been great as far as keeping in touch with people and letting thing people know what's going on and um you know hopefully 2021 or late 2020 um my stitching group that i meet with weekly we just we did a zoom session last night and that was great so that's a good way to connect with stitchers too um i don't think we could zoom a retreat but if you have local stitches in your area or just people you know online maybe zoom you know it was a lot of fun so um different times call for different measures so new start um march 15th i had started botany bay sampler with ellen chester of um with my needle so this is my last video was about me kidding this up this is from fox and rabbit designs i am using a um silk weaver fab fabric 40 count and this is where I have gotten. So I am using the called for DMC. Um, conversion, except I have substituted in um, some Victorian motto. So for the blue, I was using Storm Sky. Um, and for the two pinks in there, 
I'm using these two, pink foxglove and classic pink. And actually, I think that green that I showed you, I think I'm using it for this too. I should probably figure that out for these trees. So the DMC conversion, it's not horrible for this project. It's kitted in over dyes. Um, I'm just finding that some of them, I want them to look a little bit more muted. So I'm just making decisions as I stitch and just pulling it out. So this is, this is almost the entire first page, which is done. The border gave me fits, but once I got the border set, I really did enjoy stitching on it. So I would like to get back to that soon. Um, something else I started, I had a little bit of starditis, a little bit of stitch what I want when I want. So, um, the 13th of every month this year, Julie, Kansas City Girl in the Colorado World, and I have been stitching, um, doing a Halloween start. And this year, I, I mean, this month, I decided to start the Old Salem Room Company by the Primitive Hair. So for a couple of reasons. One, because I really have been wanting to start this. Um, two, monochromatic stitching I find very, very relaxing. And this is mostly 310. So um, I can kind of get into the zone, zen, and I, by the 13th of March, I needed something. So Old Salem Broom Company, it was. And um, also when I was filming my um, video of kidding up Botany Bay, I had a piece of Wren and I thought about maybe doing Botany Bay on Wren, but it wasn't, wasn't the right color, but it was in my mind because I was like, this is perfect for something that's all black. So you can see I made one little error, so I ripped out, but that'll be stitched over. So that's it. Not a big start. So this is 40 count Wren. Old Salem Room Company. All right. One more start. Because, you know, one, two, three wasn't enough. Um, the rules of trying to get my whip count down kind of went out the window, um, this month. Um, Abby Bella Stitch was doing March Madness, doing a new start a day. And Jen Lee of Quirks and Stitches was kind of the one who started the whole March Madness thing because she couldn't do Mania. She was doing it in March. So the th three of us started chatting about possibly doing a start together on um, a specific day because Abby and I were going to be at Frugal Yankee together and we figured that way Jen could be with us, you know, in spirit. Um, Frugal Yankee didn't happen. So instead we were all together in spirit and we all started a Blackbird design chart. So I went into the, the vault <laughs> It pulled out an old um, Blackbird Loose Feathers. So this is Sunflower House. This is Blackbird Designs Loose Feathers number nine. So this I've wanted to stitch for a very long time. I have had, this is a bit embarrassing. I have had this kitted up since 2004 when it came out because I belonged to the Loose Feathers Club and was getting the chart with everything that it called for every other month when they came out. So 2004, that's 16 years ago. Time to start this. this. So I did. So I've been stitching this one in hand. This is it so far. This is 28 count 
It's an R&R &R fabric. I forget what the name of it is, but you would not be able to find it because I know for a fact they are not dyeing some of these colors they did just for loose feathers. So it's a nice blue. That's a little washed out. Let me go back. That's more the color. It's like a denim blue. So really, really pretty. Um, I do have to say though, so I'm using the called for. So I have had the called for colors. I bought it together in 2004. So theoretically the dye lots were the same. So it calls for Gentle Arts, Burnt Orange, Sarsaparilla, Grecian Gold, Mulberry, I love this blue, Deep Sea, look at that, oh, so pretty. Butternut Squash, and then 10 yards of brandy because the house is um, in the brandy. Now, the vine around the house, can you see? That's, that's green, right? My eyes aren't playing tricks on me, it is green. Let me show you what color floss it calls for. Grecian gold. There's a piece of white here. Okay. When that is in the fabric, it is mostly, it is definitely yellow. It is not green. So um, I stitched a lot of the vine and it was yellow and I did not like it. All right, where did I just put my... So all this green was Grecian gold and it was really yellow. So I asked a few people Everyone agreed. Was not, did not look great. I ripped it out and I started stitching it with Greg Leaves by Victoria Mono. And I am much happier with the way that is looking. Much happier. So enjoying it now that I have the right colors. Um, close to halfway done. I just started it on Saturday, I think. So I might stick with this until I finish it. Um, cause I do have a couple of people who would like to borrow that chart. Um, so, um, we will, we will see. Um, I definitely am enjoying it. It is enjoyable. It's found a stray needle. But like I said, the colors just didn't make sense to me. So I did have to substitute in. I do appreciate the older Blackbird charts don't call for a lot of colors. They call for maybe six or seven over dyes, under 10. Some of the newer ones, I'm like, do we really need 20? That being said, I love Blackbird. So that's my stitching. And I'm saying I love Blackbird because now I'm gonna show you what I've gotten so far from Market. Um, I got a little point, this isn't from Market, but it's a little piece of 28 count platinum linen by Zweigart that I have something planned for. So, so far I have two items from Market. I have Sewing Club book by Blackbird Designs. This is, I think, the best Blackbird book I have seen in a very long time. Like It is amazing. I am sure that people have done flip-throughs of it. Um, 
it is likely one of my favorite releases for market. Um, I, it's been out. I mean, it's been hard to find because they're just flying off the shelf and, um, with good reason. It really is an amazing book. Um, so many nice things on it. Let me show you a couple of my favorites. I'm hard, so I don't want to show you the chart. That pillow, so pretty. Um, I love this. This is really simple. It's a scissor box. So pretty. Just, there's so many designs in this book. It is a really, really thick book. There's great finishing instructions in here. Um, like whole sets. Let me show you this last one I'll show. Like, look at that. It's a housewife. And all the pieces for it. Really pretty. It's the back cover. So if you like Blackbird, like this is a book that I would definitely get. Great, great stuff in it. My other market piece so far is We Live in Hope by Blackbird Designs. Two samplers, big sampler on the front, little sampler on the back. Um, yeah, just really, really love it. Um, I believe it was based on an old sampler. So it's not a reproduction, but it's based on a, it's inspired by a sampler from a girl from Belfast. So that's the one it was inspired by. So really pretty. I really would like to stitch this in the not so distant future. Doesn't call for a ton of colors. Sampler is just, the big one is just under 199 by 199. You know, just under 200 by 200. So really, really like that. So those are my two market purchases thus far. I have a few more things um, coming. I did purchase a couple of other charts that had been sitting in my one, two, three basket for a while. This is a um, Brenda Gervais Shepherd Sampler. I think this may have been a, this is 2015. So this is an older design, but I love it. I think Leslie Hurley had stitched it recently and um, I really, really loved it. Anything with sheep in a house gets me. I've been meaning to pick up this and stitch this for a while. Everyone has seen this at this point. Sorry for the glare. Little House Needleworks, Suffrage Act. And then last one, this one, this is an old chart. This is a reprint. So Cricut Collection, it's called A Walk in the Woods. I love this. Love it, love it, love it. I don't know why, it's simple. But I love it. So Cricut Collection, Walk in the Woods. It's an older chart, but it is a reprint. Original date, 1988. So, um, but 123 has it in the reprint. So, love it. Plans, continue stitching what I started. Um, try to hold off on new starts for a little bit but no guarantee because right now i'm still in some of the stitch what you want when you want category um one thing i was thinking yesterday was it would be really cool not really cool i mean it it, it stinks to kind of have it really it, the world situation right now is horrible um, but it would be nice to either journal or work on something daily that kind of marks 
this time. So, um, as much as I say I want a journal, I'm not great at keeping up with it. So, I was thinking of possibly pulling out my blanket. This is a permit of Copenhagen, sampler 1830. This is huge. This is like a quarter of it. Well, more than a quarter of it. I was thinking about maybe trying to do one strand a day during this forced social isolation um, as a way to mark um, this really unprecedented time. So I came up with that thought yesterday. Um, so I'm gonna try, that's my only other plan. So that is it. Now this is kind of a disjointed video. Um, life's been disjointed, right? I appreciate everybody who has been making videos um, for us to watch. I appreciate and thank every single one of you who take the time to watch my videos um, and like and comment and subscribe and all that stuff. It's just, it's it's really nice to have this connection with people right now. Um, it always is nice, but um, during this time when we're social circle is really, direct contact is reduced to those who you are living with or if you, you know, do have to work out of the home. Luckily, my husband's able to work in the home right now. In this time of isolation, it's so nice to be able to have technology to be able to really expand those walls and those borders. I hope that everybody is staying safe. Um, I hope that everybody is staying healthy. I hope that this finds you well. I hope to be back in the next um, couple of days, um, week. I have some ideas for some videos. Um, like I said, the things I have squirreled away and um, some just stash dive videos. I know they're not for everybody, um, it's fine. Um, but making plans and sticking to them is something that helps my mental health right now too. So, um, like I said, I really hope that you're all doing well. My thoughts and um, prayers and just, it's just, it really is with everybody right now that we're all going to get through this and that everybody will stay safe and healthy. Um, that's it. Have a great day, everybody. And thanks so much for dropping by and visiting. Bye.